Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to another reading. Um, this is a series, but only uh, this series is only consistent of two chapters. Um, and I'm gonna be reading "A Need of Comfort" uh, of comfort by your favorite Liz. Um, on <laughs> archive of our own. Izuku knew his classmates were were sometimes not the brightest. But making tea when Todoroki was in the room, really? He can blame them too much anyways. Considering it had been a long day and they were all exhausted, which probably played into Todoroki's reaction to the current situation. Of course, the half and half boy had a panic, atta panic attack at the uh, attack the moment he heard the kettle set, in, set off. They all collectively agreed to make sure that Todoroki was in the kitchen or common room whenever they would use the kettle if he was he was they would spoil water over a pot instead unfortunately for kaminari he forgot to check before trying to make himself tea izuku was on damage control duty main mainly because he knows Toroki the best and he's very good at comforting people which he doesn't really get because he's honestly has no clue what he's doing when it comes to trying to comfort people izuku quickly calmed the panicking boy down enough to move him back to the boy's dorm. From there, Izuku brought him his best weighted blanket and wrapped it over the other boy's shoulders while he let him pick a movie. Then he rushed to get Toroki a cold drink and something to eat before returning back to the other storm. Of, of course, Izuku cringed at the movie that Toroki had chosen. Bad, mom, bad memories die hard, but he powered through it knowing that Todoroki got comfort from that piece of shit film that was being displayed at the moment. If he made sure that the other was going to take to be okay to sleep alone, and if he made sure to leave Todoroki with enough blankets, weighted blankets, for a lifetime to make sure the other was going to be okay to get to class tomorrow, that was their knowledge to know and not yours. And if Izuku had a major mental breakdown once he got into his own dorm due to a certain film that wasn't that was his knowledge and that he desperately didn't want anyone else to know about. Yes, he may have not gotten a lot of sleep that night, but it was okay. Taroki was resting peacefully. It was perfectly fine. Repressing his emotions just to make sure that the other boy feels comforted and safe. It wasn't common knowledge that Shinso had pretty had a pretty rough past. Past most of the boys in two A knew that he had some stuff happen to him in the past. They've seen his scars and knew not to ask anything in invasive. Of course, they didn't know anything about their past. About their past, they didn't think to ask about any triggers the Ensemanic had. Of course, Ida accidentally set him spiraling because of the fast hand movements that he continuously talked with. No one knew why he had naturally waved his arms around like a mad lab, but that besides, but that's beside the point. Shinso was sent into a panic attack, and Midoriya wasn't anywhere near the common room, so the rest of class 2A had no idea what to do. They knew that the two had been dating since the sports festival in their first year and knew that the two of them knew uh, of them each knew what the other struggled with but the class had no idea how to help shinsum izuku burst through the doors door to the dorms he had received a text not even five minutes ago did he leave his training with all might yes was he going to get in large amounts of trouble because of it also, yes, but none of that was on his mind right now. The only thing that mattered to him was the fact that his class was surrounding an already panicking Hitoshi, which w which never mixed well. Izuku rushed through the small group that formed particularly pushed people away from his boyfriend before slowly kneeling down in front of him, in front of the cat lo lover to make sure that he was seen. He went through the steps that it took to calm Hitoshi down from a panic attack. The other was predictably exhausted and Izuku glared at anyone who tried to ask questions which guaranteed which guaranteed wasn't any wasn't many he ended up carrying Hitoshi to his 
on bridal style. If Hitoshi wasn't so out of it, his face would have been bright red, but honestly, he was too tired to even think at the moment. Izuku set up his laptop. It was some anime that they had agreed to watch together, and he quickly whipped together some hot chocolate. After all, after all it's best to unwind after a panic attack with a hot beverage, well, most of the time it is. Hitoshi quickly fell asleep on Izuku's bed, which brought a soft smile to the, to the latter's face. He really wished he could stay there forever, but he also had to go explain his reasoning to All Might, to why he had rushed to take whatever punishment was given him. Everyone knew that Uraka was very determined and level-headed girl. Yes, at the start, they all thought she was some girl with a crush, and that's it, but she worked to... Worked hard to control her quirk and spent hours training to be, become what she is today. And of course, a certain purple fuck always tries to bother the girls, but Uraka is quick to John do fuck him with him. Unfortunately for her, today was one of the days where the purple fuck snuck up to her. He grabbed things that didn't belong to him. Uraka froze. She didn't f usually freeze, but she was only one in the kitchen and she panicked of course not even five seconds after purple garbage bag attempted something he was punched into next year by the only by the only one and only izuku midoriya izuku is known to be observant he's known for his ability to take on situations easily easily so you can understand his surprise when he Watched the purple garbage walk into the kitchen five minutes after Rafa had. So, being the noisy, totally not overprotective person he is, he followed him. Luckily, he had, which was he going to get in trouble for putting a Mirella shaped hole into the wall of the kitchen? Maybe. Did he really care? No. All he cared about was the fact that he had, that he was able to save his best friend from that bastard. Of course. Just because she's his best friend doesn't mean that he knows how to comfort her. Quite the opposite, really. So he calls in big guns, Ida. The two of them had been dating for quite a while now. It was sweet, honestly. They had such a healthy relationship that many people in their class were jealous of it. So, of course, Ida dropped everything he was doing to go comfort his girlfriend. He asked Izuku to clean up along the way, which he agreed to almost instantly. Just because he can't believe what his best, he can't be what his best friend needs, that doesn't mean he has to be useful, even if he already knew he was. People n knew that the boy of the shadows didn't like bright, bright things. It was natural response considering his quirk. Yet somehow people always forgot to not that not liking bright things also meant sun. He always came up with a reason to why he wouldn't go out with the class during weekends, but he was practically dragged out of the building by Mina before he could refuse the trip to the mall that everyone wanted to go on. By the time they had made it to the hall, Tokuyami's senses were high alert. He was already out in the sun longer than he would have liked, and bright four cent Lights that covered the ceiling of the mall was really starting to tick him off. Izuku knew everything about everyone's quirk. He even made sure to note the fact that Toroki didn't like, didn't like bright lights and it would quickly lead to a sensory overload if he had if he had to stay anywhere too bright for, or for too long because he knew this Izuku was a very confused to see Shiroki being uh, Tokuyami being dragged along on this class trip. He himself was a little nervous about the trip considering what happened last time they had ventured onto and ventured onto out into the mall. But thankfully the, that hand fuck is gone and locked away, so he wasn't too worried. He did make sure to bring his noise cancelling Headphones and spare sleeping blindfold in case started, in case Tokoyami started having sensory overload. He soon realized that 
he was smart to bring these items along. Both him and Tokiyami had been left behind by the rest of the group, which was most of the class, minus a couple people who either couldn't be convinced to come along, Hitoshi or the class felt too bad about waking Toroki up to make him come along with being left but being left alone with Tokoyami made him realize that the other was much worse off than anyone realized. Easy cordless lead tapped Toko Tokoyami lay on the shoulder to get the taller's attention before silently offering the blindfold and headphones over. If you give me your hand, I'll lead you to the bench where you can sit until the trip is over. Thank God both of them knew. GSO. Toroki no- uh, Oh my god. Tokoyami nodded before gratefully taking the items. Tokoyami wasn't the only one who easily got sensory overloads by, as a by-product of their quirk. Jiro can quickly become overwhelmed by loud noises, which unfortunately for her is basically just the definition of their class. Izuku made sure to watch out for the others. Whenever the class got too rowdy or Kachan started yelling and accidentally setting off his quirk, it wasn't like noise-canceling headphones were going to help her, considering the fact that she can still hear through them. So Izuku's best de decision was to bring her some required which is what he is doing at this moment in time. Class 2A had gotten a free period from Aizawa Sensei and were using it as a glorified hangout time. Well, that is until Kachan started yelling at the rest of the Baku squad. They were trying to study after all, and Kachan is the best person to go if you really need good notes quickly. However, Izuku noticed the growing discomfort that Chiro was in, especially after Kachan kept using his quirk. He did what he thought was the best option and asked Hitoshi to inform his father that Izuku and Jiro were stepping out of the room probably for the rest of the period. He let the musician to recovery go, quietly explaining why he was doing this all. Yes, Izuku wasn't allowed to get treated by recovery go anymore, but that was okay. It's not like he was the one who needed healing, so Jiro would be just fine. Besides, all she needed was quite so quite. Besides, all she needed was a quiet place to stay until at least the end of the period. If Izuku was a shot, if Izuku was shot a nasty glare from the elderly woman, he didn't let the fact that he noticed it crumple his hand crafted smile that was plastered on his face. If he ran out of the room once Jiro was allowed to stay, then had a moment in the bathroom that, again, was his own personal info that no one needed to know. Okay, that was um, part one. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll come back for part two. Bye-bye!